السلام عليكم جميعا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله uh, Welcome to today's session of the Ramadan Pioneer Series It's an initiative by the Dubai Future Academy It's the capacity building arm of the Dubai Future Foundation I'm very happy today to uh, welcome the speakers uh, from the Dubai uh, government with us uh, We're going to start with uh, Dr. Mohammed Rada from the Dubai Health Authority and we have Dr. Nassim Mohammed from the Dubai Municipality and Brigadier Khalid Razouki from Dubai Police. Thank you all for coming. And my name is Khalif Al Gama. I am with the Dubai Future Foundation working in the labs uh, department. So, gentlemen, uh, a very quick question and a broad question that I think is the uh, topic of today's discussion, uh, which is how is the government in general applying technology, medical or technical or otherwise, in combating the current situation that we are facing today. And with that, I'd love to start with Dr. Mohammed uh, from the Health Authority uh, to really give, give us an idea. Akram Khalifa, thank you so much. And thank you to Dubai Future Academy and Dubai Future Foundation for organizing such a wonderful pl uh, platform, the Health Pioneers platform which I personally uh, am going to miss after Ramadan. Uh, we got into the habit of joining every day at uh, 4.30. So this is going to be a habit that I will miss uh, dearly. Um, I, I couldn't be happier uh, to be joined by uh, His Excellency Mr. Khaled uh, Razougi, Brigadier Khaled Razougi, and Dr. Nassim Mohammed, Director of Public Health from Dubai Municipality. Uh, both are colleagues and both have been uh, maybe uh, frontliners behind the scenes uh, with the government of Dubai in fighting COVID-19. Allow me, Khalifa and uh, Your Excellencies, to share my screen. I have prepared a few slides which will uh, depict uh, uh, a little bit of the efforts that have been done uh, in terms of fighting COVID-19 from a Dubai Health Authority perspective. Uh, I hope I give you uh, a good uh, overview on that. So um, when asked to speak about the role of technology in the pandemic and the uh, fight against COVID-19, allow me also to uh, explain a little bit of how we work in government. So yes, I represent Dubai Health Authority. However, in this pandemic, we work very closely with our brothers and sisters from United Arab Emirates, Ministry of Health, MOHAP, and uh, uh, Dubai uh, uh, Department of Health in Abu Dhabi as well and NSEMA, which is the National Emergency Crisis and Disasters Management Authority. So all four of us form uh, a unity, honestly, when it comes to healthcare issues and working together. I cannot stress the importance of this because collaboration, coordination is of utmost uh, requirement in such pandemic and in such responses. Uh, when speaking about pandemics, also allow me to uh, go a little bit back to history and to learn from uh, the Spanish flu, which uh, was circulating the world back in 1918. As you can see, uh, very primitive uh, resources. Uh, they didn't have social media, they didn't have any form of technology. Uh, and this, by the way, was one of their uh, hospitals. I presume it was a, a church at the time or a, or a school that was transformed into a uh, field hospital. Now, when, when I did a little bit of research, I found some of their uh, news forecasts at the time. And as you can see, there is a funeral ban, there is a warning against flu, there are dances, classes that are banned, gyms that have been stopped. So very much the same efforts that are being done right now. So we are doing the basics plus the technology. Now, uh, a little bit on the side, just to mention that there was a, an official announcement that VIX Vaporub is going to treat Spanish influenza. So you can imagine the resources that they had at the time. Why am I mentioning all of this is that uh, the Spanish flu took three years uh, until they saw it going away. I hope we don't see three years of COVID-19 until we see it going away. We have technology, we have resources, we have intelligence, uh, human being intelligence and artificial intelligence. So inshallah, we do not see uh, the pandemic lasting for three years. Many lessons learned from the Spanish flu Social distancing, again, as basic as it sounds, is still applicable right now. 
young healthy adults can also be victims of, of their or own immunity. Uh, unproven drugs, uh, untested drugs and vaccines as well uh, to be careful with and starting a center for disease surveillance and control early on. Taking you to our Dubai Health Innovation Center and uh, Dubai Health Authority, where we have established in 2019 a 3D printing lab, which came in handy, honestly, and 3D printing face shields right now. Everybody's speaking about PPEs, uh, personal protective equipment, and alhamdulillah, through the lab, we were able to supply DHA with over a thousand of uh, 3D printed face shields. These are two of our doctors, Dr. Sam and Dr. Khaled, uh, wearing the shield. We were also inspired by a child uh, from Canada to create these mask suspenders, which are great for ladies especially. Uh, when they're wearing hijab, it would go around their head and not go around their ears and, and annoy them. Uh, we're also exploring 3D printed nasal swabs right now. Of course, this is half of the story. There is also the test tube that needs to be manufactured. There's also the solution that goes with it as well. And then after that, the PCR machine. Uh, we've also been closely working with the higher colleges of technology, monitoring their progress on 3D printing, where they've been working and exploring 3D printed ventilator splitters. Uh, we've also, uh, and I think had a great uh, echoing in the community where we started the drive-through facilities. This is one of four facilities in Dubai. Uh, huge uh, popularity amongst the UAE nationals and the citizens and the residents of the UAE. We've also ramped up our vehicles, delivery medication, uh, from six vehicles in January to 30 vehicles. So you can order your medication and it would be delivered to you at home. Started a field hospital, uh, which is currently up to 3,000 bed capacity and more, inshallah, if required. And um, in, in terms of identifying the enemy or, or identifying the genes of the virus, so uh, Alhamdulillah, Mohammed Barashid University, uh, for medicine and health sciences, they have been identifying and ongoing, ongoingly identifying the types of genes that this virus has. So viruses have the ability to change with time. And uh, we are also documenting the growth of the virus against other nations. Uh, working together with the Department of Health, Alhamdulillah, mashallah, they announced the largest uh, lab outside of China for COVID-19 testing. But this is a great achievement for the United Arab Emirates, honestly, where we can now ramp up our testing capacity, working with our uh, brothers and sisters in Ensema. al Hassan UAE is an app that would be tracking and tracing uh, positive cases and allowing you as a negative person, uh, as a negatively uh, undiagnosed or non-diagnosed, inshallah, with COVID-19, uh, to alert you in terms of coming close to a positive person. Um, and in terms of ramping up our testing facilities in Dubai, uh, the UAE has alone achieved 1.2 million uh, tests so far as to date, 430,000 tests are in Dubai. So that gives you a little bit of a flavor of how much ramping up in terms of testing capacity has done. We have gone from 3,000 tests to 6,000 tests daily, and inshallah more. Alhamdulillah, all of this couldn't have been achieved uh, without His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Hamad bin Rashid Al Maktoum Conference of Dubai's uh, thorough fellowship and uh, mentoring as well and guidance during this COVID-19 situation, working closely with his brother, Sheikh Mansour Mohammed Barashd al-Maktoum, chairman of the uh, disaster committee in the uh, government of Dubai and all the director generals. Honestly, I've never seen such uh, wonderful collaboration in this non-wonderful time, unfortunately. However, this collaboration is what's going to get us through this pandemic successfully, inshallah. When you look at Dubai, when you look at the UAE, we have done everything that successful cities, successful countries around the world have done in terms of deployment of technologies. And inshallah, we will have a successful outcome very soon. Thank you so much for allowing me, Khalifa, to present my slides. And I hope that we will uh, continue enlightening you through this panel discussion. Absolutely. <laughs> For your doctoral. Thank you for your time, and we'll definitely have a bunch of questions that we're going to be asking you, but I think we're going to go through our guest speakers first, uh, going next with Dr. Nassim. Uh, thank you, Dr. for being with us today. We'd love to hear more about what the uh, Dubai municipality has been working on and how, would, how did they utilize the technologies and technical capabilities. So, 
thank you very much, Khalifa, and good afternoon to everyone, uh, dear colleagues, the, 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 the panelists for today, and also the ones who are going to watching us uh, now and, and, and listening to us. Uh, I hope that uh, today's session will be beneficial to everyone, as uh, Dr. Mohammed was just uh, uh, explaining, yes, the collaboration among all the entities at this stage is the beautiful thing that happened uh, under these circumstances. Uh, I do have also certain slides, if you allow me just to share it with you. Uh, I hope it will not take very long time. Um, so the screen is uh, clear for everyone? Yes. Yeah. Uh, in Dubai municipality, uh, as soon as the, uh, as soon as the, uh, let's say the issue happened, we, we always, uh, as you know, all our plans and strategic plans, we make sure that we work on it a little bit earlier than, uh, than, than this pandemic happened. At, at, that, at that time, we were considering it as a risk. And uh, it was a risk. And as you know, in the government sector, uh, we all have had, I mean, as, as per under the umbrella of Ensema, uh, we have already on the, in the Emirate of Dubai, we have certain risks and for each entity, there is the, the, the owner of that risk and also there are some support uh, entities. So uh, immediately after we heard about uh, Corona at that time, what we worked, uh, we linked this into our strategic plan in Dubai municipality. And we started doing things that probably those services were not there. Uh, then we were find, trying to find out like what is our role will be in, in, in such issue in case this the situation will be even worse and worse. And uh, we immediately uh, started by um, looking into our capabilities that we have uh, in terms of uh, the experts, health experts, uh, certain uh, uh, specialities. Uh, and also what helped us as well is that in Dubai municipality since long back, we, we have a section which is, uh, cons I mean, working on the registration of certain products like the biocides. So we started uh, working on the uh, cleaning uh, companies uh, that are doing disinfectant. And, and, and earlier there was no control over them. So we, we gathered them all together and we requested them that you guys need to now work uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way that we will be controlling all the disinfection processes that's happening. The products that we are using, the disinfectants and biocides products must be all approved. Uh, and many of these products, basically they are the ones that are used business to business. They are all um, concentrated products. So it needs to be used uh, in a safe way where there is a process for that, and it has to be used by professional people as well. So we started that process. Alhamdulillah, maybe uh, the, the, the thing that happened with the municipality, the agility that we had. So within less than one week, we were able with our experts, and it was all enhanced, that we could approve all these disinfection companies. We listed them on all our website. We made it available for everyone. So as soon as there was like positive cases anywhere, we were sending these uh, these companies to them. We were also uh, supervising the process of disinfection that was happening. And not only that, we have not stopped by by the way uh, that one, but we have also started to do the in-house uh, sterilization due, uh, uh, with our people. And I will come to that uh, very soon. And also we did the approval of the, uh, some of the uh, waste management. You may tell me that, okay, the medical waste is always there and there are certain companies who are doing that, yes. But there were some other ways that they were contaminated, but probably they are not also considered medical waste. So even the belongings of the, of the cases, for example, that needs to be uh, disposed. So these are the things that we also made sure that we, uh, we, uh, we uh, gathered all the uh, waste uh, management companies, and we made sure that we also go through uh, evaluation of those companies and approve them and put the list on the uh, uh, website of Dubai Municipality. How we started to do this? Uh, of course, uh, there are various uh, sectors being affected by uh, COVID-19 day by day, even it's more and more, but we made sure that we are aligned with this. Um, there are lots of uh, sectors that the municipality is inspecting on those sectors, like for example, the 
uh, shopping malls, the uh, educational establishments like the schools, the hotels, before the lockdown that happened, we had uh, lots of inspection on making sure that these uh, premises are complying with the rules and regulations by NCMA as well as the uh, higher committee in uh, Dubai. Uh, we learned a lot actually from this, especially at the case of Naif. Uh, it was a successful story. All of the entities uh, worked on it, and I'm sure that uh, probably, I'm sure that our colleague from Dubai Police has lots of stories, so I probably leave the Naif story to him. But uh, we had uh, 24 hours, uh, three shifts, uh, sterilization of Naif, and I may come uh, to a little bit add on it. Uh, with other photos that I have. So what we did actually, we had lots of, as I said, in Dubai municipality, it's a routine job that the waste management department, they have lots of trucks, they have vans for cleaning, etc. It's a very routine thing that our irriga irrigation department, they also have certain other uh, equipments. Um, also we had our, uh, the uh, uh, pesticide uh, management team, the same thing, they had lots of other capabilities. So we brought them all together in the beginning of this crisis that happened. And we said, you have lots of uh, equipment. So let's, instead of we say that we will buy this and that, no. Let's say that you have these type of equipments, what you can do in house to make sure that we can okay. start doing the sterilization, especially that we have also another department who are experts in such products. So alhamdulillah, little by little, we start doing this. And maybe you could see from the social media that most of the things that we are doing, especially these, these pictures are showing that at the beginning when we started the national program uh, in, 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 in late March, for example, there were lots of, you know, like missing equipments and uh, that is manually being sprayed. A little by little, we made sure, I mean, here even we, we went uh, even to uh, not only that, but also when we were covering all the areas in, uh, in, in Dubai, uh, that also we made sure that we, we get into all the areas, all the valleys uh, within the areas, etc. Some of the local uh, people, we were at the, at the gate uh, opening their doors and saying, can you please come and spray even inside the house? We said, okay, no problem. I mean, we usually don't do that, but we, we didn't want to say no, and we, uh, we have done this, I mean, uh, for them. Uh, the national program is still its, uh, its own, and we have uh, each day we have three shifts, actually. Uh, the good thing is that our top management is always there. Uh, they make sure that they are with our people, the frontliners. Uh, probably the, 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 the image you can see on the, on the left is the, uh, our director general, and also some other director generals from other entities also, they uh, contributed and they participated with us. Uh, we have certain weekends that we've done. Maybe um, I'll, I'll show you some of these uh, which we came uh, come up with after some time. So every three weeks, our people, we have created certain teams. One of the teams is only working on such, uh, such equipment. So they are w uh, working on like what we have in Dubai municipality. If we can do some changes on it, we have engineers, we have all the people who are expert, then they do it. Uh, otherwise, we may even buy a new device, like the one that is uh, on the right side. We realized that when we are covering all the areas in Dubai, I mean, at the outdoor, we started that program, and we covered all the 226 areas of Dubai. So we covered everywhere. But then we come and we repeat it again. The areas that are having, we, we, we call them hot zones. We call them areas that they need like uh, continuous uh, sterilization, like the labor camps, uh, the knife was one of the cases. There are lots of other areas based on some risk uh, modules that we have. And we realized that we really need now some equipments that are smaller and it can uh, disinfect the pavements, some areas which the big cars and the big vans cannot get in. So uh, we had certain of these uh, devices uh, already there. It was uh, uh, with our environment de uh, department for the beaches. The beaches was locked down. So we said, why not to utilize them? So in-house, they've done some of changes. And then successfully, we started. And the good thing about it is that 
it for for like around more than 30 minutes it can cover all the area so one area for example if it's an alwarga or it's an murdif um, with two of these we can cover them within uh, one hour uh, the, 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 the best that happened as well is that we, we had also certain areas that we really need to reach them uh, without locking down, for example, the, the road or uh, areas which are very narrow between the buildings. So uh, even probably we cannot cover them with other devices. So we started with uh, buying the sanitizing drones. Uh, till now we have around four of them. And successfully, we are we are uh, using them uh, every day in different areas of Dubai. It's uh, spraying around uh, around around five liters per minute, so it's really fast. And uh, there are lots of specifications for this drone. We, uh, I mean, our team, the the technical people, they've gone through lots of them, and then they have chosen this one. And we uh, are using this uh, in many places in the farm areas and also some other areas. Uh, these are our recent uh, equipments that we bought in Dubai Municipality. Uh, it's very fast uh, equipments. Um, it's a spraying, it's, it's like a mist turbine it has in it. It's like a fan in it. A throwing distance is, is really, uh, really high. Uh, it, reaches, uh, it reaches a very um, far distance, not like the manual one which we, we, we started with in our program in March. Nowadays, we are all using such equipments. Uh, and this is the good about technology is that uh, our people also work with the company so that they have done lots of changes in it uh, with, with having such devices for the uh, sterilization program. We also worked with certain companies that we need to have certain gates, disinfection gates. And the one that is here, it's uh, the one that we have used and we, we put it in Naif. Uh, it's disinfecting the whole car, so there is no need for the person to get outside. It's not for the people, but it's all, but only for the car. So we should also uh, realize here is that the type of the products that are used is totally different. Here we are assuming that the chemicals um, uh, will will only be for the cars and not for the individuals. Uh, many people, many of our CEOs, DGs, uh, volunteers from different uh, places, we make sure that we, uh, we uh, this is like a collaboration actually. So we make sure that we give the chance to everyone. Uh, I do remember, this is one of the stories I would like to share, is I do remember when at the, at the beginning of, the, of this uh, issue, COVID-19, when it happened, uh, many people from other departments in Dubai Municipality, from our customers, they were calling us and saying that we really want to participate, we really want to volunteer. At that time, we didn't have a, a, a clear process of uh, shall we get them in or no. As you know, because this is chemicals, concentrated ones, uh, probably there are some risks that. So we really wanted to work first. Uh, to have a guideline for them so that we can start. Then we decided, no, it's, uh, we believe this is a chance for everyone. Everyone has the right to combat this COVID and participate um, in this for, 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 for the whole nation, let's call it this way. So that's why we have given them the chance to be part of this. Um, lots of things, uh, probably we will be discussing through the discussion so I will not go through them now. We have done lots of circulars, uh, either but to be used by people at, in houses or even uh, uh, for the companies, uh, for the premises to, to uh, comply with. Uh, and we, everything is uh, posted on the website of the Bible Safari. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dictora, for your explanation. This was really eye-opening and great to see. I have a bunch of questions which we'll leave, I think, for later on. And for now, we're going to move to our colleague, Dr. Brigadier Khalid Razoui from Dubai Police. If you can tell us, Dr. Uh, a little more about uh, what Dubai Police has been up to. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you very much for having me and would like to thank Dubai Future Academy and also welcoming all everybody and uh, the panelists and, uh, and everybody around the world who are looking forward 
uh, to give you uh, an overall of what are uh, the things that uh, Dubai government have been uh, established or provided uh, to the people. Uh, as you know that uh, in Dubai police, we are among uh, of the uh, uh, government entity that we are in the front line of. So we're working very closely with the health authority, uh, Dubai municipality and uh, uh, other departments we are uh, controlling the spreading of uh, the COVID-19 across the city. Uh, we will share with you, with you um, a small presentation about what are the things that we're working with, what are the future plans, and also we're going to share what is the experience that we have. Thanks God that we are living in UAE and we have uh, the, uh, the strongest infrastructure in, uh, in case of uh, the technologies and even the bandwidth of network and the interconnectivity. And as you know that the Dubai government even, uh, we are uh, the pioneer uh, in providing the system and application where the people they can provide all kinds of system uh, anywhere uh, around the clock, even from their homes. So during the COVID-19, we have, uh, as you know, we have our customers and even we have our employees. So we have to provide what is the better service to uh, give them the facility uh, without any hiccups during uh, the uh, spreading of the COVID. So uh, we have uh, discovered that it was a huge peak and people of using the online services, especially the mobile service and the internet. And there was a reducing number of people visiting the uh, traditional centers. Because as you know that the people are so uh, afraid of touching any kind of equipment, uh, kiosk machine, uh, etc. That's why we are pushing our team to provide those kind of service 24 by 7. On the back end, uh, as you know, that we do have a police officers, uh, they are working day and night. So we have to provide uh, a way that they are connecting to the system remotely in secured way. So we provide all kind of mobile services in secure channel, and they have a fully access through the system. And even we have an, an, uh, an employee that working even at homes uh, accessing to the uh, uh, as they were in the office uh, without any problems. Um, I have a short presentation. If you allow me to share it with you guys, uh, the emerging technologies uh, versus COVID-19. So this is one of the projects that we're working now currently uh, in Dubai. As you know. Uh, the most important for the safety and security is to control the people and control the people who are using the roads, using the shopping malls. Uh, so we have established uh, a testing currently in uh, a few of the shopping malls. As you know that the government they had announced that uh, the people that can go and visiting uh, the shopping malls and even on the road and then in some of the allowed times based on the announcement from the government. So here in the example, uh, those cameras will detect what is the distance between the people. And if there is like a group of people moving together without leaving any distance, it will give us an alarm right away so that we can send the police officers to just to uh, let them to stay away, keep a distance between them. The uh, other challenge uh, that we were, as you know, we have a project which is called Ayun. Uh, it's one of the strategic uh, projects uh, across the city. We are, we are connecting all the CCTV cameras uh, across the uh, city, uh, even the shopping malls, uh, tourism, uh, tourist attractions areas, uh, roads, you name it. The, the big challenge is, as you know, we do have a big number of people who are wanted to the government. Uh, but uh, the olden days that we detect the people using the facial recognition. Nowadays, everybody is wearing their masks. So how the system gonna detect those? So we are currently working with the company who can detect 
the person even if he's wearing a mask. And uh, probably I've seen in the news media that uh, the police officers, we provide even them all kind of equipment that they, are, uh, they need to monitor uh, the crowd and even uh, to monitor the temperatures uh, and uh, the heat map of the people for accessing all those public places, uh, the road, etc. So this is a special helmet where it can, it has a, a heat sensor, so it will detect uh, the heat of the persons in front of them, uh, even on distance. And uh, as you know, also uh, probably have, uh, we're working very closely with the uh, with the government. For the people who have been infected or have been quarantined, uh, we do already have their databases and we do have their information. So we inject all those information to the cameras that we have it across the city. So if anybody who had breached the law uh, and uh, he uh, went outside instead of staying in his area, it will give us alarm. So uh, we do have all kind of uh, data that already fetch on all the shopping malls and uh, across the cameras in the city. Also, we have working uh, with a lot, among of the uh, universities uh, and the uh, government uh, to provide even bit what are the new things, what are new trends. And we have a special team in the crisis management where they are looking for what are the latest technologies across the world. So this is an example of the uh, Khalifa University that working with. Is, uh, is, uh, they are monitoring uh, the uh, wastewater. And uh, so it will detect if, and, uh, if there's any possibility to track the spread of COVID in, uh, in general population. And as you mentioned, uh, probably Dr. Mohammed, he mentioned that there's a lot of companies uh, they are now working to provide the 3D printed face shield. And uh, uh, those kind of shield we already uh, provide to our police officers and uh, anybody who's in the front line. Uh, but we're looking forward to also uh, not just using the normal sheet, how we can in integrate with it like uh, a facial recognition cameras, a heat sensor, all kind of equipment that the police officer uh, can have it with him. And uh, this is one of the example of uh, so smartwatch uh, that the authorities uh, currently we're using it, especially even in UAE, where uh, it give the patient who, uh, who have uh, an active uh, uh, issue with his health with the, the COVID-19, so we can ensure that they are not violating and self-quarantine. This is also uh, one of the uh, product, uh, it is UVD robot. Uh, it's been used in uh, disinfect killing uh, the virus or bacteria. So it can be helpful even to use it in the uh, hospital. And also we're uh, currently working with the company in uh, China where uh, to provide uh, the 5G petrol robots we're going to be available in the shopping malls. Uh, so uh, those uh, robots it will interact uh, with the people, checking their temperature, checking if they're wanted or not, and also in the same way to uh, keep our people in safe distance among uh, the people. So this is an overall what are the Dubai police are working with, and uh, we always um, having like a daily meeting we are monitoring the situation and the spreading of the COVID-19 across the city. And uh, also uh, we do a working now with uh, a lot of companies where they can predict the spreading of the COVID-19 in the city in the future uh, based on the databases that we have. And uh, we do have probably going to ask us what is the input of those data. We do have a lot of input, as you can see. We do have all the CCTV cameras. We do have an access on the radar uh, uh, across the city. Uh, we do have integration with the uh, border control. Uh, so all the information that it can help us to predict uh, not just a crime, 
not an accident, even predict the spreading of the COVID-19. So uh, this is uh, what we have it here in the, currently in Dubai Police. And we're always looking forward, uh, especially the companies who have any kind of experience uh, or best practice that can help us uh, to control the spreading of the virus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brigadier. Thank you. The, that was very enlightening. Uh, if I might ask uh, you, Brigadier, and start with, mashallah, you've had uh, an incredible opportunity to test out many technologies for, for different aspects of, of your uh, the services that you give us to my police. What would you say the one that you really felt, uh, you know, uh, had the biggest impact uh, on the way you do work? Well, thank you, Khalifa, for uh, your uh, excellent question. Actually, uh, once the uh, issue had been spread out in, in the city, the big challenge is with the companies who are providing uh, us the equipment. Some of the uh, companies had uh, struggling with their manufacturers, especially in China, because as you know, they were having a problem with their manufacturers, so a lot of factories had been stopped. So uh, there was a, a lot of delay of providing those equipment to us as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, the other part, as you know, nobody had predict or, uh, or uh, they think that spreading of the COVID-19 will have an impact, especially on the CCTV cameras. The, uh, the long uh, days, we always just detect the facial, the behavior analysis of the person, and sometimes we check their temperature, but not uh, that uh, closely enough to the people. But nowadays, everybody's wearing their masks. So how we can make the city in safe position and we can detect also the crimes that have been occurring. The other uh, aspect also what uh, we have a big challenge, as you know, a lot of uh, people, because, we are, because they are sitting at their homes, you don't have, a, they, a lot of people have been lost their jobs. So there's a lot of uh, hacking have been done, a lot of crimes uh, been done, trying to break the uh, banking accounts, uh, trying to uh, uh, foolish the people to send them their credit cards, um, you, you name it. There, so that's why we have a special team who uh, controlling those uh, areas and to stop uh, all kinds of uh, activities. So this is mainly that uh, things, the challenges that we have. Ah, one more thing. Mm -hmm. We do have, as you know, people who are working at home. Those key people, they need a license. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you know, a lot of the government, uh, they have uh, stopped uh, providing a budget to uh, purchase a new license, new software. Mm -hmm. And we are controlling the budget to control uh, or to support the medical uh, department and the other sectors. But thank God that the company, they were so cooperative with us. They gave us uh, whatever if, uh, uh, support with us. They gave us free license, uh, even a uh, lot of equipment they have provided by themselves. So I really appreciate the good cooperation between us and the private sectors. That's amazing. Thank you, Brigadier. And you actually answered two questions that people have been asking in the Q&A. One of them, somebody was uh, asking uh, Mr. Rami Malik, saying that the cybersecurity attacks have increased. Right. I wasn't personally aware of that. So it's, uh, and you tarrat so. Yeah. Well, we, we, uh, nowadays uh, we, we should, as a government, uh, thank God that we have, uh, special department that they are looking to secure the network and the uh, even to provide a better service to the people. But there should be a good awareness, especially with the kids. As you know, Khalifa, a lot of our kids now, they're staying at home. So they spend a lot of their time, what they're doing, playing games. So we have to uh, keep an eye on those kids, see what are the kind of games that they're working with. Uh, try to control it. And uh, we're trying very hard uh, with the TRA to close all uh, those, uh, you know, bad uh, sites or anything that is uh, affecting our kids and children. Uh, so, 
ask the same question to my colleagues, uh, Dr. Mohammed or Dr. Anasi, from the technologies that you have seen or the advancement that you have tried to adopt, which ones were you most uh, you know, happy with, proud of, the ones that really increase the efficiency as, as technology should in your departments? Alif, I think uh, one of the earliest ones to be uh, easily deployed was 3D printing. As you can imagine, and no, mashallah alik, uh, 3D printing can, can be uh, molded in so many things and so many uh, aspects. Uh, but we're still at very experimental stages. However, we were able to deploy many, many things uh, and work with them immediately. The other thing, of course, and uh, this might be something that we cannot touch and feel are the data analysis platforms around us. Uh, mm -hmm. Multiple data analysis platforms have been deployed in the United Arab Emirates to analyze data, to uh, give us future prospects on where we're going. As you can uh, imagine, Dubai and the United Arab Emirates have uh, multiple nationalities living at any one time in them, more than 200 nationalities. Uh, and dem demographically as well different, geographically as well differently located. So as you can imagine, the spikes or the movement of the virus would be in different areas at different time. So the data analysis uh, platforms, I think, around us have really helped us in the containment process of the virus. I, I would, I would uh, probably, uh, you know, vouch it that those two technologies were able to step in immediately. Amazing. I, I can't believe that, you know, saying that five years ago, who would have thought that 3D printing would be that useful this fast? We thought it's still going to take a while. But here it is. It's, it's, it's good to see. And I think there is more potential as well to be explored with 3D printing, inshallah. Absolutely. Great. Doctora. Uh, yes, Khalifa. Uh, I do believe um, the, the equipment that we have used and the changes that happen over the, this, this, uh, this two months, let's say, uh, we uh, internally had some measurements, let's say, to know how exactly the efficiency and the productivity of each worker is, is, is changing. And the good thing is that, as I told you, probably we started with the equipment that we already had with some as like, like small changes. Uh, I do remember our first time when we started in uh, uh, Riga Street, um, we covered around seven kilometers and it took us around six hours to do that. Uh, yes, uh, because of the devices, because of the equipment that we had. But now with these type of devices, the advanced technology that is there, the turbine car that we have, etc., we can cover these things in even uh, less than 20 minutes. So this is how the efficiency now is changing, you know? So I don't think I need to tell more about it. And now even we are working even more than that. So the drone as well is the same thing. For our inspectors to get into the, and the workers to get into the, areas of where the farms are there so that they can start disinfecting such areas. Uh, just imagine right now with the drone, how fast we can do everything. But alhamdulillah, I mean, we can say that the efficiency is really increasing. Uh, Dami Biyach, uh, Dr. Anasim, uh, you know, I think all departments, all our lives have changed drastically, or at least we see, we see so. Um, some of those changes will stay and some of those changes will, won't. And I, I really wanted to dwell a little bit more on, on that, uh, Doctor. And he, as an example, we've always said we're going to work at home for the longest time. And all of a sudden, because of the situation, now we're working at home. And I think everybody could agree that this is one of the things that will stay even after post-COVID. Uh, my general question is, out of the changes that you have uh, implemented right now because of the current situation, which ones do you see will stick with us and stay from a Dubai municipality point of view? Well, uh, as you said, there are lots of uh, like dramatic changes happen. So there are certain areas or sectors, let's say in Dubai municipality, that uh, probably was uh, affected in a way. Uh, some other sectors probably less been affected. Uh, remote working, as an example, it may work with all the admin departments, you know, it will work well as well, uh, because uh, you are not wasting your time to get into the work, coming back to work, you know, you are spending your time at home. So it's even maybe the efficiency is more. Uh, when we come to some other uh, sectors, uh, the field visits must be there. 
So especially for the inspectors, you know, but even for that part, we changed ourselves. That's why I said in the Women's Party, we have a high rate of agility. Uh, we have tried to use our systems that we have. The, the thing that helped us a lot in Dubai Municipality is that, uh, mashallah, I mean, lots of this, the, the services that are provided to the customers, they are all online uh, services, uh, electronic and smart services. And uh, probably the way we were, uh, uh, let's say, using such services, now even this one being changed. Like, for example, we have an application. The application was only giving me uh, product information, nothing else. But due to this, during this, two months time, we were working a lot. I mean, there was lots of load on IT department. I'm sure that the other entities, they had the same issue. I mean, worldwide probably, uh, that they were doing some little changes in these type of applications that even we can do some a smart inspection through these applications. So instead of I send my inspector to an area to just check for me, for example, the social distancing, if uh, the camera can be on and it's, uh, the sensor is somewhere, I have access to that, I can do the monitoring while the inspector is in the office. So these are the things that being changed and uh, probably we, uh, we, these are lessons back by, by the way, we learned a lot. And I'm sure that after COVID, we will not going to go back to the traditional way for sure. And many things will be changed and probably one of them is this one for sure. Sure. But if I if I may add, it's not only for Dubai municipality, but I, if I can even talk on behalf of the even private sector, uh, we have lots of customers uh, from private sector. Maybe in in these two three months, we could uh, realize that there are lots of products, the biocides, the disinfectants, in the market. Uh, the number will increase. I mean, forty percent of all the products that was uh, registered in Dubai municipality since years and years. 40% of them being registered only during the last three months. Uh, many of the companies, the manufacturing companies, they even changed the line of, uh, man, uh, of factory. They changed it from maybe either in line, they worked in line, or they changed demand is really high on this so it's it, it changed many many things it changed many sectors private sector the municipality departments how they worked on it and also some other entities i hope i answered your question anyway absolutely absolutely thank you thank you so much uh, i'm not sure if one of my colleagues talked about the uh, al-hassan app uh, who was it Dr. Mohammed. Dr. we have a question for you, I guess. Uh, and it has to do with the app. Uh, somebody is really intrigued, wanting to know how does the app really work? I'm not sure if it, uh, you have the answer, but uh, you know, some people are asking that question. Right. So um, many countries, once patients have been identified as positive, um, they would like to know their location to prevent patients who are negative from getting into close contact with them. Uh, there are multiple successful uh, implementations of such an app. Uh, in the UAE, we have one app that has been approved by the National Committee in SEMA, where we uh, have been advocating all as uh, health authorities in the United Arab Emirates to use this single app. Uh, now, we have also gone beyond that, where there are now, should a patient be positive, and they do not download this app and do not comply with this app, there are now fines have, that have been announced in the recent announcement. The technology is very, very simple. Uh, it is Bluetooth enabled, it is uh, GPS enabled. Uh, yes, it consumes part of the data. However, the benefit is on the patient themselves and the surrounding uh, people that are close families and people that they would be interacting with. Uh, it's a very, very simple uh, technology. However, uh, the coordinated effort and the unified effort is what is important in such an approach. Great. Uh, same doctor, uh, same uh, question to you, doctor, uh, as I was uh, talking to uh, Dr. Nasib. In the, yes. Yeah, after, after Dr. Nasib told us about the municipality and how really change, it changed the way they do business and work, I'm sure because you are really at the front line as the Dubai Healthcare Authority, how do you really see, what changes do you think would stick after, after COVID? 
well, like for a sigh of relief, I know that AI cannot replace real doctors. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I think that this was a debate uh, for a long time, you know, AI will be replacing real doctors and real surgeons and so on. However, time has, has shown us during COVID-19 that uh, doctors are going to be still needed to be out in the field. I think deployed in a fast way and uh, الخير, the frontliners, whether from doctors or technicians, uh, Dubai police, Dubai municipality, roads and transport authority, I cannot tell you how important it was for them to be doing what they do at the front line. So uh, يعني, uh, allow me on behalf of يعني, uh, Dubai Future Academy to send them through this platform uh, high salutes on what they have been done doing. Now, on the same note, I've also seen AI uh, working with us rather than against us. Uh, we have been deploying multiple artificial intelligence uh, tools, whether it's from a chatbot or design elements in 3D printing or data analysis as well, where artificial intelligence has helped us in buying time, gaining time. Uh, as you know, uh, and alhamdulillah, rahmat rabbil alameen, and uh, the wave came to us maybe in, in March or in late February. So, mm -hmm. We had some time, and that time was accelerated with the use of artificial intelligence, uh, where we've seen it uh, work wonders in a positive way. Now, in terms of uh, working from home policies, the Bi Health Authority, as it has out in the field uh, team members, we also have administrators who have been in compliance of uh, working in, uh, from their home. Uh, I myself have three teams who are reporting to me. All three teams have been working from home, except for yours truly, where I had to uh, do a little bit of movement around the field. However, uh, my, their safety was of my concern. I was very pleased to see His Excellency, the uh, Secretary General of the Executive Council, uh, Saadat Amali Ab Abdullah al-Basti, to announce that there should be 100% compliance with administrative jobs wherever possible to work from home. So this is a very eloquent example where all government staff and their uh, families' uh, health was of utmost importance to us. In terms of going to life after COVID-19, I don't think life after COVID-19 will be similar to life before COVID-19. But allow me to also dwell on a point where life during COVID-19 uh, has to be transformational. Uh, we have to adapt fast. We have to also be creative. It's as if the world has gone through a reset button and we all have to be now running fast uh, at, at a coordinated effort, fast pace, where to think of the next and to think of how do we adapt to life after COVID-19. I think we're, this is going to be a journey. It's going to be changing. Even myself, when I look at the data from uh, February, March, uh, April, May, and now June, there is, there is a huge change in the way we think in our methodology as well. I'm sure this change will continue with us uh, for a while. Uh, however, agility, as Dr. Nassim mentioned, uh, fast adoption, working together in a coordinated effort are going to be of utmost importance to us as a government. Amazing. Thank you. And, and to that, uh, Brigadier uh, Khaled, and I'll ask you this question, and really we're going towards the end of our session. Uh, the silver lining, uh, Brigadier, you see a lot of uh, demographics in the city. You deal with a lot of... Uh, you know, situations, let's say, COVID-related uh, and, and not. Uh, have you seen any silver lining because of the current situation? Things that have changed, behaviors that have changed that you think are going towards the path? Uh, well, Khalifa, first of all, uh, as you know that Dubai, we do have uh, more than 200 nationalities uh, from different countries living in our city. And, uh, and we are really uh, would like to thank them very much for their cooperative with us as government. Uh, there, there was huge uh, among the, uh, you know, sending messages to the people in different languages. We didn't know that situation. What are the things that they should do? Uh, life uh, has been changed a lot. And even uh, as Dr. Muhammad and Dr. Nassim mentioned that uh, we are on a stage that uh, our life has been going to be changed. Uh, if you allow me, I have a, uh, one slide to show it, to share it with you guys. Uh, it will explain uh, the things that 
uh, we should consider about it. Uh, all right. So, as you know, that uh, especially in my department, uh, we, uh, an IT department or an AI department, uh, I have uh, around 200 uh, nationality, uh, 200 employees uh, working with me. 90% uh, of them, they're working at home right, right now. So what we need, we need to activate the online meeting system between the employees. So we need to provide uh, the best system uh, across the government so that we can interact with uh, even the private sector, government, employees. And as you know, that a lot of companies nowadays, they have provided those kind of uh, online meetings. And uh, but we have to think about it, which was which is going to be the secure uh, as a government uh, to have a much more uh, features. We do need to automate an AI process for all kind of services that we provide to the people. So we are now we currently now we are re-engineering all kind of service that we provide to the people, so that we can predict the their requirement before asking. And also to qualify the employee to work remotely at 100% to ensure their continuity of service during the crisis. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, also we should think to, pro to have uh, a private cloud among the government uh, so we can store all kinds of information, integrated the data between the government, even the private sectors, and also to provide uh, a strategic uh, partnership with all kind of technical uh, network equipment service systems ac across the companies. Uh, so we have to work very closely. And as you can see from, uh, from uh, this situation, we work as one team, all the government working together to fight against uh, the spreading of the virus not just us, even the world, the whole world are working all as one team. So we have to exchange the information, ex ex exchange the exp experience among others. So, uh, yeah, so this is about it. And, and uh, we have to think something for the future wise, not for ourselves, even for our uh, children, our kids in the future. Absolutely. I think to that note, uh, Brigadier, uh, we come close to the end of our session. I'm just going quickly through the questions, seeing that we've answered the majority of them. Uh, maybe there is one, uh, and really I'll leave the floor to either Dr. Mohammed or Brigadier Khalid to, to maybe pick on this uh, topic. Uh, people sit in their homes now and sometimes that uh, becomes very heavy on them and i just wanted to uh, know are we addressing the mental uh, you know aspects of society now i think that could be our last question for tonight for today go ahead doctor um yes mental health has been on our uh, agenda for a while uh, pre-COVID-19, we have a strategy for mental health in government of Dubai, uh, headed by Dubai Health Authority, approved by the Executive Council. It takes uh, into consideration the health of a child, uh, a mother, a pregnant mother, and the elderly, and the entire society in uh, Dubai. Now, when COVID-19 came, we saw some disruption to that strategy. Mental health now is at risk. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, we have a term in healthcare called post-traumatic stress disorder. This is really for war veterans who have uh, survived wars. However, they still remember elements of war and they have this impact on their psychological well-being. I hope we will not reach to that level. Now, that is, that is an extreme uh, and worrying uh, scenario. However, we have to be ready for it. Yes. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we can say uh, that we are conquering this virus. However, we have to be vigilant, not only for this virus's second wave, but as well for other consequences such as mental health. And Alhamdulillah, today, 
Uh, we have within the command control center uh, established by His Highness Sheikh Hamdan Mohammed Rashid Al Maktoum at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, a track that tackles specifically mental health. So uh, initiatives are going to come. Uh, I know time is, uh, is not on our hand right now with the session to go and dwell into these initiatives. However, stay tuned for more initiatives to be announced from the CCC. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for enlightening myself and everybody here with us on the panel about the great efforts that the government is doing. We honestly are very proud of you and very happy that we are in these circumstances with this leadership. And I thank you very much. I thank my colleagues for giving me the opportunity to mod moderate this really great session. And Mabrook alaykum al-shahar, Mabrook al-ashr al-awakhar, mashabga'an al-eid. Thank you. Thank you very much. Shukran Khalifa. Mishkor Khalifa, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Khalifa, and the team, and I was also our colleagues and whoever attended the session. Thank you so much.